I, in no offense, right, I still, and that's probably why I do new construction or why I like commercial, I don't like the cattiness of real estate, the cutthroatness, and then the unprofessional. Sometimes we're just undertrained. No offense, but the bar is kind of low for the real estate industry. And that's why people don't have respect for us to a certain degree, right? To, for some of us. And so from and so instead of complaining about it, I decided to actually be part of the solution because it was bruh, it was it was bad. It was it was it's it's bad. It still is. And now during so up until, you know, from from two thousand what 10, 15, you know, 2012, whatever, 2012 till now, you know, it's, we've had a good long decade of real estate. And so you didn't have to be a great agent. You didn't have to be, you know, upstanding, you know, you know what I mean? As long as you were doing transactions, people kind of let that go. Now it's about to, we're about to find out who the real estate professionals are. Cause there's a difference between what I call an agent and a professional. So yeah, my pro- still saying, I still feel the same way. No, I don't have a lot of real estate friends. No, I mean, I don't. I have some. I have some who are, you know, but not. I don't hang out with that crowd. Yeah, and and I love, you know, I love my and I love the profession. So that's why I invest in our our people to help them get better. I just um, different personality type. Right. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Real Estate Proverbs Podcast. I'm your host Kevin Jefferson. Today's episode is with Miss Fee Gentry. How are you, Fee? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> That's awesome. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Um, Fee, so for those who don't know who you are, give us a little bit of your background. Sure. Um, I am what I'd call a an entrepreneur, right? But um, for the last 18 years, I've hung my shingle, my my wares as a, as a real estate entrepreneur, So, which means I'm a real estate um, uh, salesperson, I specialize, you know, me and my team specialize in new home construction. And then also I am, I wear a lot of different hats where I am the diversity officer for EXP World Holdings or EXP Realty. And, um, and then the founder of several affinity organizations, which I'm sure we'll talk about that later on. Yeah. Gotcha. Glad to be here. <laughs> gotcha. What was your uh, background before uh, real estate? Sure. Um, Went to undergrad, and this is where my career path was in, in, in the medical field. Um, I went to went to school to be a physical therapist, so I actually did go to physical therapy school. But I also have a, an uh, MBA in marketing, and so most of my most of my early career was in post rehabilitation, fitness, sports training, and then I owned a sports event marketing management company. So I've done a lot of different things. I've owned what nine different uh, companies in five different industries over the years. So that's kind of, I'm really, like I said, just more of an entrepreneur. <laughs> Got you. Um, do you own any of those businesses now aside from the real estate? Um, marketing. I, I do um, actually own an events, uh, events, mark, uh, events company. So I'm part of a partnership with the events marketing company. Yeah. Got you. In terms of the um, transition into real estate, how'd you get there? Oh, dude. Okay. <laughs> it's a story, really. Um, I was in physical therapy school. So remember I told you I went to PT school. Hated it. Like, hated it. Wow. But that's what I had always wanted to do. Like, I, that was, you know, I always was wanted to be a sports medicine physician, own my own sports medicine center, the whole nine, and hated it. And so I just crashed and burned that part of my career. And so um, my mom was building a house in Central Texas, and she was... And so she was like, would you go check on the house for me? Because, you know, because she was building it long distance from California. And I lived in Texas at the time. And so, uh, or still do. And I drove up, saw, uh, met this real estate uh, agent and didn't know that she just happened to be the commissioner of the real estate uh, for the state of Texas. Had no idea uh, about who she was. And because uh, we're, you know, dealing with some of the complaints with this, with this, dealing with this house. And so she said, have you ever thought about being in real estate? I was like, oh, I didn't go to school to like be a real estate agent because you know I didn't think very much of real estate agents at that time. And so, um, and she was like, you would be good. And I was like, nah, I don't think so. She was like, no, seriously, you could have, you could be in the top one percent. And so, I did not know a listing from a lockbox. I had no clue with either one of those, but I knew how to market. And so, my first year, I sold thirty nine homes. Second year, forty seven homes. I got like, I got uh, what do you call it? Um, a silver medal for like rookie you know runner up for rookie of the year so i was mad about that where i was like oh if i'm gonna do this <laughs> i'm gonna do it well and so i uh, went on to you know sell more homes create a you know create a team etc became a team leader 
in and with, I was with the big red organization at that time. And, and so that's how I got into the industry. Literally, I, I knew nothing. <laughs> so was the commissioner was um, was she a black or a white lady? No, she was a white lady. Uh, Avis Wukash. She is who started my uh, career out. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you still talk to Miss Wukash? Not as much anymore, but she's like a you know sister mother from another person. But yeah, she's highly respected, uh, you know, in the Hall of Fame for real estate here in the here in the Central Texas area. But what I do remember about her is her defending me as a black woman, which was interesting. I was I started real estate in a small town because really I want to do commercial. I don't really like residential is okay, and I want to do commercial, but it was these good old boys, and so um, I started selling real estate like I said, residential. And I remember walking into um, the board of realtors in this town. I'll, I won't use their names, um, but walked in this board of realtors and like, they kind of looked at me like, who is she and who does she think she is? And they started to try to manage me, like, you know, wanted to approve my buyers before they could go see a listing. Um, we'll give you 20%. And I didn't, I didn't know. And so Avis, Avis was telling me, she was like, I know what that is. That's racism. Like she, she pointed it out. And she happened to be like the commissioner and uh, she advocated and penalized those people for doing that. And she said, don't ever let anybody ever do that to you again. And so from then on, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was people were always complaining about my marketing and and all kinds of stuff. And she was like, that's what that is. It's it's racist racism, just covert, covert racism. Yeah. Did you ever ask her what she saw in you? Um, That's interesting. She has, she just has a talent. You know, some people have gifts for people. I, that's one of my superpowers. That's one of her superpowers is being able to pick out talent and people. And so, um, and that was just something about her that she just, when I asked her about, hmm, we just always, we've had conversations about it, but she just knew I was different than most people because um, most agents came with the mindset of like an employee mindset. Well, I was already an entrepreneur. I had never, you know, I had, I had never worked for anybody, you know, had always worked for myself for the most part. And so I think she understood that um, being an athlete, you know, um, an athlete, et cetera. But, but yeah, she just took me under her wing. Yeah. Gotcha. Speaking of being an athlete, what sport did you play? Uh, volleyball and basketball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Went to school on a basketball scholarship, but yeah. That's, Where did that's, you go? Yeah. Vir uh, went to Long Beach State and Virginia Commonwealth University. VCU. Yeah. Graduated DCU. from Virginia. Graduated from VCU. Yeah. Gotcha. Outside of Richmond, right? Outside of Richmond. Well, no, inside of Richmond. <laughs> inside of Richmond. Yeah, it is, inside, it is yeah, inside of Richmond. Yeah, Medical College of Virginia, VCU, all of that. All gotcha. Of Virginia, Virginia. Gotcha. Yeah. And then I'm a Cali girl. Yeah, I went all the way. I'm a Cali girl went all the way to the East Coast. But yeah, my personality in my headspace is East Coast. East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the West Coast chill. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> How, um, so she sees something in you. And how far between her having this conversation with you about getting into real estate and then you actually getting into real estate? What was that time frame? Probably like six weeks from the time we talked to me getting the license. And here's the thing, her business partner or one of her, the other co-commissioner, he was like going to be the, he was like, she was the commissioner of real, uh, Texas real estate commissioner. And he was like the uh the lieutenant you know like the l lieutenant commissioner that was mr jones bill jones and so they both said the same you know they both said yeah she'd be really good in real estate um so um what it was is that i was and it was keller williams who's I, who i went with but they um they didn't have an office in this in the local area that i was it was a small like a smaller town and so they you know they pushed me into um like starting you know just pushing me into getting my business running um, et cetera. So it, I don't know. It was just, if I'm answering that question, I hope I answered that question. <laughs> you answered it. You answered it. Okay. Um, why the big red company? Um, back then Keller Williams or big red, we call it big red was one of the, it was the fastest growth. So th I got in real estate in 2004. So okay. 2000, yeah. So 2004, 2005, you know, it was on the way up and on the rise. Um, it was a growth minded company. I like the, you know, I like the education and training because I'm really learning based. And um, and think about it, the headquarters of the company was right there in Austin, you know, so in the state of Texas, so um, where I'm licensed. And and uh, oh, and my uh, mentor, 
<laughs> was was with the red company. So my, you know, the commissioner of real estate was with 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 uh, with the big red company with Kel Williams. Yeah. So, how was real estate when you got into it versus your thoughts about real estate agents? Because now you're one of those people that you didn't really like. It's still the same. I. <laughs> I, in no offense, right, I still, and that's probably why I do new construction or why I like commercial, I don't like the cattiness of real estate, the cutthroatness, and then the unprofessional. Sometimes we're just undertrained. No offense, but the bar is kind of low for the real estate industry. And that's why people don't have respect for us to a certain degree, right, to, for some of us. And so, from, and so instead of complaining about it, I decided to actually be part of the solution because it was Bruh, it was it was bad. It was it was it's it's bad. It still is. And now during so up until you know from from two thousand what ten fifteen you know two thousand twelve whatever two thousand twelve till now you know it's we've had a good long decade of real estate and so you didn't have to be a great agent. You didn't have to be you know upstanding. You know you know what I mean. As long as you were doing transactions, people kind of let that go. Now. It's about to, we're going about to find out who the real estate professionals are. Cause there's a difference between what I call an agent and a professional. So yeah, my, still the same. I still feel the same way. No, I don't have a lot of real estate friends. No, I mean, I don't, I have some, I have some who are, you know, but not, I don't hang out with that crowd. Yeah. And, and I love, you know, I love my, and I love the profession. So that's why I invest in our, our people to help them get better. I just, um, different personality type. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think what no, what can we do to improve that? Because as uh, a lender, mm -hmm. um I see the same thing, right? I see um and if you're listening, you know, I love you guys, you know, but I, <laughs> I this is what I see. I see entitlement. I see um that you're the most important thing in the transaction. Um, I actually just had a conversation with a realtor and I let them know nobody's happy unless the buyer and seller are happy. That's right. Like it's not even about any of us as vendors. It's about, are we getting the seller what he or she needs? And at the same time, are we getting the buyer what they need? Um, in order to make the transaction go through. Um, when we lose sight of that, then we have something called commission breath, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why when you see studies, they have agents viewed beyond, but you know, lower than car salesmen. Car salespeople, that's right. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that there is a low barrier of entry into real estate. You know, when you sit back and think about it, you're selling people the largest purchase that they ever had to make. And yeah, you take, depending on what state you're in, you take 75 to a hundred hours, right. You know, to get your license, you take a state test that you pay for and it take you a while to get it. Um, but I think there has to be more, um, more training and, and you're right. We're going to see who the real top producers are and the real professionals are in this market because, you know, you just can't breathe and have, a, you know, get under contract. You're going to have to have some training um, and you're going to have to be strategic in your, your offers as well as your partnerships with your lender partners. Um, and even just to get that lead and or get that listing, you're going to have to be creative. Um, so we'll see it, it, it's, it's going to be an interesting time in real estate. Um, and we've seen a shift. So I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. so, so you're mainly commercial and new construction, no, I'm just new, new construction. And I'm getting on the commercial side. I'm actually going to be going to a fellowship at, at uh, university of Southern California, USC, which is the number one commercial uh, school. Um, it's a program for commercial developers for for people of color. That's what it is specifically for. Yeah, they have they are trying to the commercial industry is actually more trying to get more progressive than re, than real, residential real estate. They are really actively seeking people in the commercial space. 
Absolutely. Because they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So how how long have you been doing new construction? New construction, I made a decision um, in 2014. I took a hiatus room. I got my, you know, I, I got my ass kicked, if I'm allowed to say that on, on, this, on this, but <laughs> got my butt kicked in 2009 and 10. Um, went from selling like 60 something homes to like, I think when it went down to like 12 or 14, I remember the four, you know, the forecast and it just killed me trying to do, you know, short sales. And, and then my own personal house, I did a deed in lieu of foreclosure. I was one of those countrywide loans. I got a countrywide loan and it was, you know, so it was. And so um, when I took me and my brother started a, a house flipping business and doing a subject to, you know, doing um, creative re real estate uh, transactions at that time. And, 2014, uh, when I came back into the business, I was like, if I come back into the real estate, how do how would I re you know re revise my um, or re re educate or redo myself my business? And um, it was about new construction. That's like I didn't I don't like old stuff. I always like new cars, like new houses, and so it was new construction for me. I love the the building process. I understand how can this construction process works from slab to you know all all of that. So. Um, and that's what I probably like I said that commercial brain of mine is like I'm all about development, um, building communities out, all that energy efficiency. And so 2014, so I've not sold a new, I've not sold a resale home since 2015. Now I have listings, right? So we list, but I don't sell. So if you, if you want to buy a resale home, I'm going to refer that out to somebody on my team. Got you. So do you work for a large track builder, small builder? Who do you work for? Or with no, I with I I have partnerships um, with with builders with with some of the you know top builders in the country, and so I'm what's called a move up specialist or a relocation specialist. And so, and to be honest with you, for the last two years they have not builders stopped calling me until like in the last three you know three months. Builders are just now calling me back. They're like, hey, fee, you know, could you we have a you know seller who needs to sell a, a sell a home? Could you come and could you sell their home? And so I do help them sell their home. In, con in, con in conjunction with when the builder's building the home. Because um, there is a process that when seller when selling a new construction home and they don't want con contingencies, I have what's called a guaranteed uh, buyout. So we buy their home. I have a you know investor who will buy their home at market value if they so that they don't have a contingency situation. Um, also, I help I help builders. Matter of fact, I just did it today. Uh, just we just put our list out today. We help builders move inventory that has been. Um, that has been dumped back into the into the system. So if it's a, a bust out home, I will go back in um, so that they don't have to put it back on the marketplace. I will help them try to sell their um, their existing inventory because it's already under contract and they're trying not to you know they try not to mess with their numbers too much. So I'll help individual. So about nine different builders that I currently do some, do work with um, is who I used to have contracts with. Now I'm going back into that phase of that. Gotcha. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I haven't heard that in a long time. Yeah. Like I remember um, prior to like 2008 um, that there were some people who had that type of business model where they had move up buyers. The builder would, and, and, you know, get an agent to sell the current listing so they know what's going on. And then mm -hmm. at the same time, they're moving their inventory as well. But I haven't heard anybody mm -hmm. specializing in that. Um, I've heard of it being done, but I haven't heard anybody mention that's what they do in a long time. Yeah, that's all I do. Yeah, uh, that's all I do. Yeah, wow. and I and yeah, and I and I've taken a hiatus because the part, I mean, and I'm not, and I'll be, you know, like I told you or you, your audience doesn't know, I've been really busy. Uh, <laughs> so have, I'm just now getting back on the sales side of things. So I just had just been kind of taking them as they as they were, and the market was so heated up that I just kind of you know chilled. But what I've been doing really is being you know um, representing EXP. So I'm with the, with EXP World Holdings. I sat on the board of directors for EXP World Holdings. Um, and I kind of like I told you before, I'm the first black woman in U.S. history to hold that position. That's crazy to hold a position on a, a publicly traded board of directors. And um, since then, I think two other people have been appointed. But, you know, come on now, 2020 for me to be the first black woman in U.S. history, an uh, honor and a privilege. And I stand on the shoulders of it. And of course, you know, people are looking at you on Wall Street and other places. Right. Right. <laughs> <To make sure. laughs> right. And, and agents, you know, the agents that we represent. So it's been, you know, it's been a great honor of serving those agents um, um, at the highest level that you can in the industry and just serving the industry in general. Yeah. 
what is that like? That's got to be um, a bunch of men, <laughs> predominantly white men, as no, I'm, all white men, all white men, <laughs> and yeah. one sister. Right. <laughs> what is um, how were you perceived when you first came in, and how's those relationships um, expanded or cultivated over that time frame? Sure. Um, when I interviewed, so let's go back to the interview. When I was considered for the board of directors, um, I was interviewed among, you know, there I think there were like 60,000 agents at that time or 40 something thousand. Yeah, 40 something thousand agents at that time. Um, probably 125 of the of us were considered to be candidates. And so when they, on the interview process, I wanted to make it very clear, very clear that I did not want to be a token pick. I wanted to be there because I was qualified, et cetera. And that's, and that's what it was, was that I went through a rigorous process. And then you have to also, you know, pass SEC <laughs> guidelines and regulations. People just think, oh, they pick you. No, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be come up under the SEC as well. Um, my, I made a, I made a statement to, to, to most of the board members as I was interviewing with them that um, I need, that I wanted to make sure that um, it was clear that I was there because I was qualified. My contributions were because of my experience and previous board experience. And so, um, you know, one of the guys who became my mentor is um, is a half a billionaire and he's well respected on Wall Street. He works with, you know, um, most of your, your your Fed chairs, your, I mean, he's he's in that arena. And um, and so we, we've had those discussions. We had those, we don't, you know, those uncomfortable conversations about race, sex, Etc. Um, most like Glenn Sanford, for example, is the founder and CEO, uh, founder and CEO of the board um, of World, or CEO of World, AXP World Holdings. We, you know, we've had great discussions, great relationships, uncomfortable conversations because there's still it's still a difference, right? They still they still don't understand about being in the shoes of people who because they never had to think differently, and so I've had to you know push um, push them to expand their thinking. But overall, great guys. I mean, great, great guys. Um, there were some challenges. I'm not going to lie. There were some challenges on the board of directors um, of things that I didn't agree with. And then also I got to see about some things are just business, right? That's just business. And the culture of business is run by white men, 95% of white men and those organizations. And so it's just having more exposure. Um and it, I learned a lot from them, and I'm sure they learned a lot from me. But it's the exposure, and it's us continuing to be at those seats and not just sit at the table, have a voice. And so that's that was the big difference. Um, Do you think that, well, I guess that's a tough question because there's not many people that look like us in those positions. Um, let's say that let's kind of take it away from the real estate when you we do have representation in those positions from the outside looking in it doesn't look like that person represents us other than in color right right so we feel like we don't we still don't have any representation if that makes sense i get it yeah you have to, it's a fine line that you walk. Um, I remember, and, and, and I like, and I just got the board last month. So I remember walking that line, like we're still not seen or heard or respected or people. I mean, and I don't know, cause I've never been on, a, I've been on different, different boards, but this is, you know, a very, it's a publicly traded company. I mean, a multi-billion dollar company. When people ask you, well, how did you get on the board? And you know what they were trying to say, but not really saying it um and then you even have people in our community thinking that we that i have to represent them like what you doing for us <laughs> kind of thing you know yeah. so you you have to walk i like y'all i represent everybody you know of course i'm rooting for everybody that looks like us however overall after by me representing everybody and giving everybody a voice means that i'm representing you like specifically right so that's yeah so it was it was it's a tough, it's a, it's a tight rope, a tight rope walk, but that's why I was sitting in that seat right. because it Ho does take somebody who's somebody who's diplomatic. Yeah. Right. Uh, or, um, All right. 
So that's that's the thing. Kind of kind of like Black Lives Matter, right? You have Black Lives Matter, but then you have people saying Blue Lives Matter. And we never said Blue Lives didn't matter. We're saying all lives matter, but Black Lives Matter because we're seeing a brunt of what's going on. Okay. And that's the problem in terms of people not being in our shoes, understanding that we're not saying that it should all be about us, but give us a fair shake. Right. right. Prejudge us, give us a fair shake and an opportunity to do what we can do. Now, if we get in that opportunity and we mess it up, that's our fault. Right, right. But we've got barriers and boundaries that we have to, and hurdles we have to jump over before we even get a shot. That part right there. And yeah, it's definitely. like, how do you, like, what was it, 1967, when Ben Slayton finally was able to be a part of NAR? Yeah. To be the first realtor, the first black, yeah, first black realtor in the U in U.S. and it had to be a Jewish guy, Jewish guy who who was a sponsor, was a was a sponsor, right, right. So, like, it's it's tough. Like I've been in this industry since two thousand four too, and I've I know for a fact that when they saw me in person. And I never heard from them again. I know why. It's not because mm -hmm. I was unprofessional. It's not because I don't know what I'm doing. It's because I, when you talk to me on the phone, you can't tell what I am. You need to, right. Why do you think I go by the name Fee? Because nobody, you can't tell. Um, I didn't, I don't put my, and people don't ever have to think about that, right? Um, I don't put my face on business cards or signs. Matter of fact, I've had people tell me not to. Um, because I told you I started I initially started my career in in a smaller town, military, very conservative town in Texas. And right. so I already knew what I was dealing with. I walk in people's house, they couldn't tell what I was on the phone, you know, like you said, same thing. So I started going by fee instead of Felicia because I didn't want any, you know, and it was just easier to remember. And but I mean I walked in people's houses with Confederate flags. They, they be, you know, like you said, hug oh I can't wait to meet you. Can't wait can't wait to meet you. You know, we're gonna get this house on market, you know. <laughs> and you show up ding dong. Yeah. What can I help you with? Uh, I'm Fee. You know that that look. <laughs> that part, right? That part. And so exactly. So we already know what it is. And you just you just um like you said, you just go with you just go with it. And so that's the way it was on the board of directors. That's the way it is with real estate. You know, the X's and, and that's why I founded the Black XP Network. The X's and O's of each contract are the exact same. The contracts are the same, right? The you know, the contracts are the same. However, our experience of it is different. Um, when I'm talking to real estate agents, you know, they're talking about, you know, like I had a home a friend and he said, yeah, my family's been farming this, you know, farming this neighborhood, big community in Austin. We've been farming this community for, you know, six generations. And I said, in my head, I was like, yeah, my family is farming this, <laughs> farming this neighborhood too, but in a different way. Yeah, we was, yeah. We was farming it too, but it was a different way because... <laughs> Exactly. So it, they just he didn't he didn't you know he didn't um, and he said and he just kind of looked and I said yeah my family was too. <laughs> Next generation. Because <laughs> there, there was found uh, they were uh, they were uh, this this family has had this community since like eighteen sixty something yeah like eighteen like eighteen sixty seven or something like that that's how long it's been six generations of this plot of land and they it's a big subdivision in Austin that his family created and it's well known in the greater Austin area. I was like, yeah, my family is probably <laughs> farming, it. farming it or some get like my family's farming it too. <laughs> yeah, your family owned the farm. We it were far, farming. We were farming it. Yeah. We was farming it. We was that we part. was part picking and <laughs> yeah. doing all the work. Cropping. Yeah, we were the yep. sharecroppers of it. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So just so you, thing, you yeah. mentioned uh EXP I mean black EXP EXP network. Correct. Tell us mm -hmm. what that is. Uh, the Black EXP Network is a an affinity group at EXP of Black agents that we've come together as a collective community that we, and I founded this organization because like we said, 
I would be at these events. I'd be, um, you know, I'd be on workplace and I'd see, you know, and I, I I'd miss us in the room or especially with a, with a, um, especially with a cloud-based company. I'm like, where are we at? You know what I mean? Like with a cloud-based company, I see an avatar, you, you know, you'd be on campus on a, in the metaverse, you know, and you'd be like, hey. And so actually it was our CEO, Jason Guessing, white guy, you know, he, yeah. Jason um, was like, you know, I was like, man, Jason, I love all this, but I, you know, I kind of looked around and decisions were being made and all this stuff was happening. And I said, I want to, you know, I want to see more of our people. He goes, well, once you start a black HP, you know, black HP network, I was like, bro, I'm like, I'm not doing that. He's like, no, do it. And I was like, no, like, no, nah, I don't know. That was in July of uh, 2018. Fast forward to, you know, December of 2018. We were at a Christmas party. He's like, have you started the Black East Bay Network yet? And I was like, no, he's like, do it. He goes, I'm serious. And so um, another friend, uh, Julie Nelson, who had founded the Pride Network, you know, she was like, you, you know, you really need to, you know, start this organization. So literally on July 18th of uh, 2018, the Black XP Network was born with zero members. And now we have over 4,600 members. We're the largest Black real estate organization in the nation, you know, affinity group um, under one brokerage. And um, and on top of that, I didn't want us to just, and the other part that we wanted was to have economic voice in the company because all the, you know, in diversity and inclusion matter, you know, issues are great, the initiatives are great. But unless for us as Black people, we have economic input and economic power that's where it was and so we um we developed um um some tracking mechanisms and data where we you know know that we and this is loose but we know we've probably done more than that but like last year we did 112 million dollars in referral to company business this year we're on track to double that that's awesome that's Mm. awesome (laughs) um so as an affinity group what do you guys do besides referring back and forth to each other? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. We education pro. So we have education programs, training, live events. So we started something that's called like the Agent Accelerator Academy. Uh, Damian Forster is one of my co-founders um, in our in our tribe. We and the way I founded the Black XP Network is it was created on Black excellence. It was really off of the movie um, uh, um, Black Panther. And based on the, the premise of Wakanda and the way we talk to each other, our language is is everything our tribe leaders. So, you know, tri- tribe leaders are 12. Um, we have education, training, technology, et cetera. And so when we set it up, um, the infrastructure is such that we said, you know, our, our, our key objectives and goals are growth, expansion, and retention. So we want to grow. We believe that we can grow this, this, this uh, agent, you know, agent count to about 100,000. Black agents and allies in the in the in the United States and around the world, um, we do so. We have it with the, the education. So we've got the Agent Accelerator Academy. We have agents. It's an immersive, intensive, immersive program where we take agents, especially all Black agents who are taught for us. You know, by agents who look like us, icon agents and influencers to go from zero transactions to we've had them go to what's called the icon status. So an icon agent is that's where you get your $16,000 back in cap. And it's the highest status that you can get in the company. We're at, I don't even know where we are right now. We might be at 20, 20 plus I, black icons, cappers. So those are people, you know, get back their 100%. And then those who just had no transactions, we, you know, take them to the trend to their, from their, you know, to first transactions. And it is an amazing program. You have to apply, like it's a scholar, you know, not a scholarship, but it's like you have to apply, like you're getting in college. You have to write essays, do videos, et cetera, take out, um, and you're getting in interviews to get into the program. And so we've had, uh, this is actually our fifth semester coming up um, or we do it, offer it twice a year. So it's really, really, um, you know, really a high level program that's recognized by uh, EXP. And um, and then we have live events, man. We have, you know, because like I said, we're a cloud-based brokerage. We, you know, have live events where we do trainings. We meet up, you know, we have meetups with each other so that we stay connected socially. Um, a little bit of everything. It's, it's just, it's a community. Yeah, it's a community of, of people. We have scholarships, you know, we raise, uh, we, you know, we scholarship people to the live, to certain live events, entertainment, you name it. It's, 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 it's what we do. <laughs> what is the, what is the mission behind it? Like, what's the end goal? The end goal is 100,000 black agents and allies, $1 billion of economic um, impact to the company and, and to ourselves. 
that's what it is. I believe that we have, I call those, what we need is, we don't have a black and white problem. We have a green and red problem, which is seeing each other's humanity and, and, re, and, the, and the economic participation. And so my goal that, and the vision that I've set as the vision, visionary and architect of the Black XP Network, I have other people who help me run, you know, who now, um, because I run other stuff. <laughs> I run all of one, and I'm one of the leaders of one EXP. Um, it, it, it's to have a hundred thousand, yeah, it's to have the hundred thousand dollar, a hundred thousand agents worldwide, black agents around the world, one billion dollars. And that's, and that creates freedom, right? And it's not just, and it's not real estate because I don't believe, I'm not one of those people believe that real estate, you know, people talk about home ownership is the bridges, the gap to wealth. It's a part of the solution. It's not the entire solution. So the one thing that I like about EXP um, is that it allows agents to capitalize on, um, like a basically like a 401k we get we get stock you know, stock returns um investing and then you get that money back and can reinvest in stocks you get ownership you get affiliated services revenue sharing and so and teaching people again how to be real estate entrepreneurs not real estate agents and that's what we do for our people to help them become financially free got you um is there a push to get more african-american uh or black uh, realtors, agents in the business of real estate. Absolutely. We're looking at HBCUs. So we, you know, we're targeting, we're targeting young. So like our young professionals, uh, one of our young professional leaders for us, you know, our company, um, Jessica Eldridge, she's, you know, we're on a mission to go to HBCUs CUs, cause that's an alternative. I mean, college is not for everybody. And let's be honest, college is, I don't know what people are learning in high school or college these days. And so it, <laughs> So the real estate industry. And so, again, while we talk about that green problem, you know, um, we need to, the we method is or the you know the we method is we need to become a part of the solution. So if we're worried about appraisers, we need to have more appraisers. So we're encouraging people not just to become agents, but become appraisers, lenders, underwriters, <laughs> um, you know, title, title, rep, you know, title reps, title, title reps, which that's going to change in a little bit because we're, you know, we push blockchain like we're really big on. So that's the other thing that we're doing right now. We're really focusing on getting um, our black agents certified um, in blockchain real estate because that's going to change the game. That's going to shift at any moment now. So it's always like trying to stay ahead of trends and what's going on and be prepared. Gotcha. And with that being said, um, are you guys at all having affiliation or partnership with uh, NARAB? We have we have leaders in our organization who are partner who are with NARIB. NARIB is a complicated it's a complicated situation here. I mean, um, our mission is different. NARIB is more about fair housing. Um, for example, the Black XP Network. We're about educating and training Black and preparing Black agents for that for for, for the industry. Different. Um, no offense, but we have had a movement for. 50 years, I think nareb has been around for, oh no, it's their 75th year anniversary. We've had NAREB for 75 years right now. And we're still fighting that same battle. And so, and there, and there's some great work that's being done, right? However, we believe that we can do it in a different pathway that's faster and more effective. Yes, we part, you know, so no, are we partner with them? No, but do we have our members who are, you know, who are leaders in that organization? Absolutely. Do we support, you know, do we support their events and all that? Absolutely. It's just not our mission. Got you. Um, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Um, and I say interesting just because um, you would think there would be more um, partnership or, yeah, more partnership between the two of you. I guess I'm well, looking at it from well, a different standpoint. I'm looking right, at it well, as we're we're black, we're two organizations, well, I'm not part of either one, but organization mm -hmm. that is trying to push uh, home ownership. Um, but at the same time, I understand what you're saying, that your mission is different than theirs. And if I'm getting it correctly, I think you think there's more of a streamlined um, path to where we need to go as opposed to their um thinking and their system being a little outdated that correct politically correct, correct. way to say it 
that that's a political yeah and i mean and i know all the national i mean i've known their their past presidents their presidents their executive directors who are like so they're having a turnover you know like some of those people have come out of those so we've met with them several several times and what they presented to exp for example um in terms of our partnership or with me as you know the founder of the black exp network or or exp was something that was outdated and we said we can't and, and political so that's the other part of it EXP, you know, as a real estate agent, right, all of us and you as a mortgage professional, we can't be political. And so we can't have we can't be, you know, support companies and, and invest in companies and have it go to a political because that the people track where those funds go and have it go toward political candidates or political uh, uh, s- political systems. And so we uh, we have, you know, and we we've, we've had many, 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 many conversations, like many conversations about it. And like we said, our mission is just different. We're about, you know, um, educating and training and preparing our black uh, our black agents and allies to get them prepared to deal with that consumer, as opposed to, like we said, home ownership. We're about entrepreneurship across the spectrum. So if it made sense in the future, absolutely. Um, we're always open to it. I don't want to have that discussion. You know, we have the discussion here, but we've had many discussions in the past. Yeah, I, I, we know all of them. <laughs> like, you know, all of, yeah, yeah. And, and the days of sponsorship now are out. Like you can't just go give somebody a hundred thousand dollars and they have a chicken dinner and they're dancing and bring in the OJs and the and all that. We th- those days are over. Or, or we'll put your name on a on a on a program that doesn't do any for us as an organization. And it's not a it's not a win win. That's all. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of you and all the things that you do, what's your exit strategy? Exit strategy is to continue to build wealth um, through um, being a voice. And an advocate for people of color, women. Um, those are the things that I'm passionate about, um, and that looks like you know training, uh, coaching, live events, um, and then building um, assets. You know, I mean, a lot of us are so the thing you know that that we're like I said that I'm that I've learned about being on the board of directors is is about asset building. I, I, I like I said, I sit on the sit on the board of directors, two billionaires. Three half billionaires and billion, you know, it's mul- you know, multi, you know, multimillionaires. And the thing is, building assets. A lot of us in our community are product rich, asset poor. And so that's what I want us to focus on. I mean, that's so that's what I'm focused on. And then so my next part is, um, I don't have any children, <laughs> and so it's now for this the last, you know, I'm half time in my life for the next fifty percent of my life, fifty, you know, the fifty percent of the life, third and fourth quarter of my life is focused on building the next generation of leaders. That's my contribution. And that and that's and that's the new faces of leadership, wealth, and power. That's what I'm focused on. That's what I care about. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I mean, just from this interview, I don't think you'll stop. Like I think that you'll always be an advocate. You may not be actively selling real estate, but I think in some facet I think you'll still be an advocate for uh, pushing forward the, uh, as I guess I can call it the real estate culture, um, to get more inclusion and less exclusion um, into the game. So this has been uh, enlightening, uh, very informative interview. Um, I've got a lot of more questions. Um, but for time's sake, I know you have to go. So, uh, do I have your word that you'll be back? You have my word. You've been a great host, so I'll, I'll come back. <laughs> you didn't beat me up. You didn't beat me up. I thought you were gonna beat me up. So you no, me up, no, <laughs> never that. Nah, never that. Um, for anyone who would like to uh, be a part of the Black EXP Network. Um, or even uh, get in contact with you and ask you about anything that you have going on. How can they reach you? What's the best way to reach you? Sure. Um, for for the Black EXP Network, we we have the YouTube channel, we have a Facebook group, and we have Instagram. So it's just blackexpnetwork.com. And you don't have to be a member. You know, you have to you don't have to be um, a member or a, or you know be uh, 
an agent with EXP. It's open to everybody. So okay. we're just, again, supporting black agents. Uh, the other way is to meet me and I'm offering like, um, I'm answering, what's funny is I've been doing a series right now on what, how, you know, what's working now in the industry and, and how to weather the storm. Cause there are a lot of talking heads out there, but us as black agents, sometimes we're not connected and don't know what's going on. So I still sit at very high levels and know where and kind of know where um, industry, you know, industry executives are focusing on and how to help weather those storms. So they can meet me at meet.feegentry.com. That's M-E-E-T, like meet.feegentry, F-E-E, gentry.com. And then I'm on Instagram, et cetera.com. And so I've got, you know, I've got books and, and stuff coming out and, and some courses and live events. So if people want to get in contact with us, we'd be glad to help you. Got you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Fee. I appreciate it. This has been another episode of the Real Estate Proverbs Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Jefferson, Miss Fee Gentry. Have a great day. Thank you for watching the Real Estate Proverbs Podcast with Kevin Jefferson. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when the latest video drops.